Live events are back, and that means with promo code CHAIL, you can get $20 off of tickets with our friends at SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the easiest way to buy live event tickets. Use their ticketing app to buy tickets for MMA events, concerts, baseball, basketball, football, festivals. If it's a live event, you can find tickets at SeatGeek. They put tickets from all over the web in one place just for you. Want to go to the UFC fan experience and then see Adesanya fight live in Las Vegas? Look no further. SeatGeek makes buying tickets a breeze. I've got the app on my phone and it is far and away the easiest way to purchase tickets. SeatGeek wants to make sure you're getting a good deal. Look for the green dots. Green means good deal. Red means bad deal. Guys, it's that simple. Save $20 off your first purchase with promo code CHAIL. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. So Charles Oliveira wants to fight Conor McGregor. Now, just yesterday, it came out, Errol Hawani speculated, Conor McGregor might be out until 2023. If we as an industry could operate under that assumption, that would be really good news. For reasons like this, Oliveira came out and said, I want to fight Conor McGregor. And he was talking specifically about Islam. He said, Islam's on a great streak. He hasn't beaten any ranked guys. Have him beat some ranked guys. I've never ducked a fight. I'm not even ducking him, but I have a daughter. I have a family now, and Conor McGregor would be the best thing for my family. Yes, I'm talking about money. That's where the money's at. Now, this is Oliveira speaking. That was great. That really was great, because he just told the truth. There's nothing wrong. He didn't have to hide behind or talk about what a great fight it was going to be, or he's doing this for the fans, because this was going to be. He didn't talk about any of those things. He said, I could go make some money. Now, I must tell you, I'm interested in that, because contractually, that isn't true. Oliveira is not the champion. I think that Oliveira forgets that. Now, Oliveira would know more about his contract and his, and his situation than I would. And it would very much appear by the things that Oliveira is saying and the lack of pushback that Oliveira has ever shown to being stripped of that championship it would very much appear that a deal has been reached. That is quite simply, we will behave and move forward as though you are the champion. And I only bring that to you because only the champion gets the championship clause, which Oliveira is speaking of, in terms of pay-per-view points. It wouldn't matter if it's a big fight or a small fight. The way his contract works, he's getting a flat fee. Unless a handshake was made, and it must have been done. And I find that wildly interesting. Like, I'm done talking to you guys about Oliveira and him being stripped. I am the only one that had that right. I told you the day before the weigh-ins that it was going to happen. I told you all of the rules within Arizona of which did not have the authority to strip him, but they did it. I told you all of the rules within the UFC, of which they did activate. Guys, I got to tell you, it was like screaming into a tunnel full of nobody. Nobody seems to care that he's not the champion, but that includes him. I'm over here trying to cover. I'm over here trying to make up for it. I'm over here talking about if you want to push back and you want to test some of these theories, of which have never been tested, they've only been stated, and everybody's gobbled them up. Oliveira doesn't seem to care. So I'm quite sure that just an agreement was made. Hey, let's just pretend you made weight. Let's just pretend you're the champion. That's a little bit of a head scratcher. And it is worth me bringing up. It really is. Because when I tell you that Oliveira doesn't care that he's not the champion, some of it appears he doesn't even know. He didn't appear to know that day that they were going to take the belt away. I mean, he missed weight. He had two hours to make it. He didn't lose a single ounce. Like, there was a part that when I tell you nobody cares, including him, that's a literal statement. And you would think, particularly if you're a prize fighter, as it pertains to your contract and what a big fight is, and why you would give a damn if it's a big fight, based on the things that he's saying, we've reached an agreement, which would just be interesting to me. Okay, if we're going to do an agreement, we're not going to go by the rules anyway. Why do we bother to make these? Like, what, what would the point of that be? If we're not going to go by it and you get treated as a champion, even though you're not a champion, why tell the world in the first place he's not a champion? We can do whatever we want with the belt. Jose Aldo had never fought in the UFC and was the UFC champion. Ronda Rousey had never fought in the UFC, never stepped into the octagon and was the UFC champion. Like, there's things that we can do in Sillyville. It's just a matter of why. What, why are we doing them? It's a fair question by me. I pass no judgment. But it is one of two things. Either Oliver has reached this handshake, of which my topic is mute, 
or Oliveira is not aware that he's not in. There is no such thing as a big fight. I hear guys talk about this all the time that in our, aren't in on the pay-per-view. I mean, it used to be a plague of our industry. We went through this era of money fight. Guys would actually use that word. I want the big money fight. I want the big money fight. Do you, do you not know what your contract is? There's no such thing. There's just your next fight. Here's the money and here's your next fight. No, this is the one. This swings the needle. This is what the crowd's interested in. Are you in on the pay-per-view? No, you're not. So what in the hell are you talking about? A money fight. It's one of these weird things that I, I only bring it to you because I'm not positive that I'm right that a deal was reached. I'm not. I'm not sure that Oliveira understands well, he's not the champion. He doesn't have that deal. That would be fully his business. I would just make an observation as an outsider that that's interesting. If I'm right and we are going by the letter of the contract, it would be very important that Oliveira win his next fight, become the champion, and then fight Conor McGregor. Not go out there and fight Conor McGregor for the vacated title, of which only McGregor gets to participate in. It's a simple observation, but I'm not sure which way is up over there at Team Oliveira. I mean, I only found out from them that they thought a check scale had to be the same as the official scale and held strong on it. Everybody says, everybody says it's a half a pound off. I only found out after that happened that as a professional athlete, he didn't have the ability to lose a single ounce within two hours. I only found out after it happened that a champion of the world and the highest paid guy on the entire card has a team flying around with him that did not bring a calibrated scale. Like, everywhere I turn with this guy, I'm getting hit with surprises. So it's a very fair point for me. Okay, did you guys work this out in the back? If you worked it in the back, great, that's your business. It's a little bit interesting to me. Why do we possibly have these rules, and why are we telling the world that you're not the champion if we're going to act like you are? That's between you all, for sure. But I would find that interesting. Sure, I of course I would, and so would you. Or moreover, does he not know? Did he not know the day that he weighed in that he was going to be stripped of that championship? Did he not know how those rules work? Did he not know that a check scale is not the same as the official scale? Did he not know that two scales can be different? Did he not know that messing with getting on and off of a scale is the single only thing that decalibrates a scale and you're watching a room full of people doing it over and over? You would have no reasonable belief to think that that scale was accurate. Why did you not have a scale? Why did your manager not have a scale? Why are you the only guy on the car that was paid seven figures? And you're the only guy without access to an accurate scale. Like, these are all fair questions by me. Oliver wants to fight McGregor. I thought it was refreshing. I thought it was refreshing that he told the truth. I see guys trying to get McGregor in different ways. And they all do it. Oh, man, I think that could be a really exciting fight. You know, he's got that big power in his left hand, but I deal with order. And I come out, I dig down to the body. And I think the crowd's really going to enjoy that. They're not, just so you understand. The crowd really doesn't give a goddamn how much his power is or if you can slip outside and get to his body. I mean, like, just so you know, there has never been an X's and O's in the history of the world that has sold. There's been really bad promoters that had nothing else to try to sell. And so they'll turn to the X's and O's. Or you get the really low-hanging fruit promoter that will try to turn to the resume. His record is 29-0 and 0, and his record is 25-1. and 1. They got 50 wins between the two of them. I mean, there's times you have to do that when you're out of creativity. And I got to give it to Charles Oliveira. He is the first guy to come out and tell us the truth. McGregor is not the rightful contender. McGregor is the biggest draw. I can make the most money and I can get the most attention for McGregor. I've never turned anybody down. Islam's a perfectly fine argument. He hasn't beaten ranked guys. I think that he should, but fine. If that's the argument you want to make, I'll fight him too. Bring me both of them, but I want McGregor because I want the payday. I appreciate that. I always appreciate the truth. The truth will set you free. We'd sit over here and give him a hard time and say, you're avoiding these guys. And, you know, what about Benny? And we, we would go through this whole thing. Or you could just tell us the truth, which is, this is the money fight. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I want the opportunity. I want it right now. Boom. That's what Oliveira said. I hope he gets it. In all fairness to every argument that I've heard to try to get Conor McGregor, you now have a guy who has something to offer to Conor. Red Panty Night is very real. 100%. This has not gone away. So that is what Conor has to offer you. You now have to offer something to Connor. I see gun guys call out Connor all their offerings and men ass whipping. Well, what if Connor takes you at your word? What if he believes you? What if he believes you're going to whip his ass? Why would he sign up for that? It's one of the strangest ways to ever call a guy out. Oh, beat your ass. Well, what if he believes you? I'm not showing up for that. 
And then you're trying to dupe the audience, right? I mean, that's always a hard one too. Whenever you think that you're going to pull the wool over the audience's eyes and they're not going to see right through it, they're going to see exactly what you really meant to say, which is just what you didn't say, which is what Oliver did say. So I don't think I'm the only one that's going to be on Oliver's side here. If this, in fact, is the weight class that McGregor plans to return to, it'd be very hard to return to a weight class, to go through the weight cut, go through the training camp, right? Like one training camp isn't harder than the other. One fight isn't harder than the other. You might be more likely to win, but you're going to give everything that you've got no matter what. So why wouldn't you go after the greatest prize, which is the whole reason you're there in the first place, which is the world championship, unless you're not going to return to that weight class. Then we're having a whole different conversation. But if Connor is going to return to 155 to make believe that he's going to return for anything less than the greatest deal that he can get, the greatest offer that he can get, which appears right now, right, you got to have time, you got to have things lined up. I don't think that Oliver is going to wait until 2023. I get that there's some moving parts here. But not for nothing, if you have to put your hat in somebody's camp, I'm going with the guy that told the truth. I'm going with Oliveira.